Okay, guys and girls, listen, we have done a whole bunch of things over the last three or four weeks. So it doesn't mean because I'm not doing the ear today that you don't have to know the ear. Please make sure you know the, the structures of the ear, so the diagram, the structures, and then the functions of each of the structures. Please make sure you know that. All right, then the path of sound and balance and equilibrium. Very important. So remember, sound is, is interpreted by the cerebrum. And balance and equilibrium, the cerebellum. Okay, right. Now, you are going to get an investigation. So you must make sure you know. It doesn't matter, people, what the investigation is about. This could be about snails traveling at, at one meter per second. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go through this one because it's about diabetes insipidus, which is the dilute urine and ADH, etc., which is the hormones you have to know as well. But that's not important here. What is important is the way you deal with a scientific investigation. It is the same principles every single time, and it is 10 to 12 marks. How many marks is this one? Um, yeah, 15 marks. 15 marks, people. So just please make sure that, that you, you follow the same principles that I'm doing now. And when I'm done as well, I'm going to put up a sheet which you must make sure that you read through to know reliability, uh, um, validity, a conclusion, an aim, etc., etc. You get all of that from the question they give you. So let's look. It says here, diabetes insipidus. Now remember, you people all, all of you, We'll know about diabetes mellitus, it's double L-I-T-U-S, and diabetes mellitus is an issue with your blood sugar and insulin, okay? This is insipidus, which means that you end up making dilute urine. Why? Because you're trying to flush the sugar out of your system, okay? Um, and also, th th that's how you can tell if someone's got diabetes, number one. Well, listen, there, there are lots of other symptoms, and these symptoms are the same for a million other illnesses, but two of them are lots of weeing. So you go to the toilet lots of times during the day, lots of weeing, making plenty of urine, number one. And number two, um, the mouth is always dry. You're always thirsty. Okay, mine is dry because I'm talking so much. But your mouth is dry. And why? Because you're trying to flush the glucose out of your, out of your body. Okay, because there's just too much. You're supposed to absorb all the glucose back into your body by the kidneys, by the nephrons. If there's too much glucose, well, it gets washed out. <clears throat> and if you test the urine the person, of a person who's diabetic, you'll pick up the glucose in the urine. So lots of weeing, okay, and being, always being thirsty and dehydrated. And secondly, uh, um, glucose in the urine. All right, so... Here we're looking at dilute urine, all right? is a disease caused by a lack of ADT, I mean ADH. Now, ADH is anti, so when you're against something, you are anti. It's an anti-diuretic. Diuretic means to we. Okay? When you take a diuretic, it makes you urinate. It makes you wee lots. So, anti Diuretic hormone. That's what a ADH stands for. So it's an anti weeing hormone. So when would you not want to urinate? You would want to keep water in your body when it is hot. Why? Because you want to be able to use that water to sweat to cool the body down. Okay? So on a hot day, for example, you would have lots of antidiuretic hormone. And think of diuretic as weeing. It's an anti-weeing hormone. It wants to keep the water inside your body. When you have less antidiuretic hormone, you then want to get rid of all that water, like on a cold day, because you don't need it to sweat. You've got to get it out. But now here, you've got diabetes insipidus, which is, and they tell you, is a disease caused by a lack of of ADH secretion into the plasma. Why plasma? Because it is into the blood. Okay, then scientists now here, this here is very important. They're telling you why they did this experiment, so, or investigation. Okay, so we've got 
the scientists wanted to determine the effect of this disease on the volume of urine that a person produces per day. So, the effects of this disease, that ADH, this lack of ADH, that would be your independent variable, and the volume of urine that the person produces every day, or the volume average volume of urine produced in a day, this is your dependent variable. There it is. That's how you're going to see what's going on. Okay, so depend, independent, dependent. This is the focus of the experiment, and this is decided <coughs> sorry, by the scientist. Your dependent variable is D-R-O-M-Y. This is what you are going to remember for your dependent variable because the D is for your dependent or responding, also write resulting, variable that is observed or measured, and it is plotted on the y-axis. Man, on the y-axis. And that is what drove me, D-R-O-M-Y. That is always how you will tell your dependent variable. It is the dependent or resulting variable that you can see with your senses, or you can measure, okay? And if you can measure it, then you plot it on the x-axis. Whereas your independent variable is on the x-axis, and it is determined by the scientists. So the number of days, the number of people, the amount of, etc. Okay, now here we go. Something else. If they say to you, what is the aim of this experiment. Look at here. Scientists wanted to determine the effect of blah, blah. So you say the aim is to determine the effect of, the, of you can't say this disease, you can say of diabetes insipidus instead of, of this disease on the volume of urine that a person produces per day. There you go. So there is your aim of this experiment from what they have given you. Now, when you do have to be when you are asked to write the conclusion for this experiment or investigation, here we go. If the aim was to determine the effect oh there's an OT here, the effect of, in, of diabetes insipidus on the volume of urine that a person produces every day, then the conclusion Ay, ay, ay. Man, I'm trying to do this too quickly. Let me do slowly. The conclusion is going to be the disease diabetes insipidus does, okay, does have an effect on the volume of urine that a person produces every day. So just by looking at what they give you in the question, you can tell the dependent, the independent variable. You can figure out the aim because you just put to determine. And the conclusion, it did or it does. Here you go. End of story. At least six marks there. In done. Okay, done and dusted. Right, now, which individual would the scientists suspect of having diabetes insipidus? Well, if we carry on looking here, the investigation was carried out on five males, which is a good sample size, over a period of 30 days. Now look at this. You've got 30 days and you've got five males and they were the similar age and the similar weight. Now looking at anything in an in a investigation, and if it has the word same, so or you can put the word same in the front, same will always talk to validity. Okay, 
It is the validity. And when they talk about the number of times something was done, or they talk about the average was calculated, that always talks to the reliability. So same, 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 validity. Number of times that it was repeated, if you had a thousand samples, if you did it 35 times or 100 times, here they did it for 30 days, nice. They calculated an average, nice. It talks to the reliability. Validity, how valid is it? Well, we had the same temperature, the same food, the same size, the same uh, uh, gender, the same species, same, same, same. Every time you can add the word same in the front, you're talking about the validity. Okay, so validity is the same. Number or average talks to reliability. Alrighty, now, which individual um, would, you, would scientists suspect of having diabetes? Well, it will be the person with the most urine or producing the most urine in a day, because remember, this is the average liters per day, so this would be number one. So number one, definitely the, the sick person. Okay, give a reason for your answer, because they produce the most urine. Okay, so number one, most urine. What does plasma? Plasma is blood. And why would it be blood? Because listen, what is ADH? It's a hormone. And we know that all hormones secrete, uh, uh, all gla endocrine glands secrete hormones directly into the blood. Why? Endocrine glands are ductless. So they'd secrete the hormones into the blood, and the blood will take the hormone to a target organ or more than one target organ, and it causes the target organ to perform a function. And I've gone through this with you before. Hormones can't make, do a job. Um, a hormone is a messenger. It's a chemical messenger made of protein. So hormones can't do anything, but they cause the target organ to perform a function. And when they cause that target organ to perform a function, then that is what results. So for example, the pituitary gland releases follicle-stimulating hormone, which stimulates the, the development of the follicle in the ovaries. The follicle releases estrogen, which stimulates the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone. The luteinizing hormone causes ovulation, okay, and it causes the development of the corpus luteum into the graphene follicle, which then releases progesterone. Progesterone inhibits the pituitary from releasing follicle stimulating hormone when the corpus luteum disintegrates, the pituitary releases more follicle-stimulating hormone, and the whole cycle starts again. Okay, none of those hormones did anything. They caused a response from the target organ, the pituitary gland and the ovaries. All right, now, <clears throat> when they talk here about the word plasma tell you about the type of gland, it's really, plasma means blood, so therefore, it is an endo. okay? Identify the dependent variable, easy. There's your dependent variable. The average volume of urine produced, that's it, okay? Or the average, but you must put average, the average volume of urine produced. Um, and then, identify two factors that should be kept constant. So what factors are constant? It's going to be anything with the word. Same. So you're going to have, um, well, we know that they're the same gender. So it'll be, the, they must eat the same food. They must do the same exercise. They must have the same amount of water. Um, they must have, uh, be in a room with, a, I said, the same temperature. Anything that you can put the word same in front of. They must sleep the same amount. They must do the same amount of exercise. <coughs> okay, all of those same, same, same. That is going to talk to the, the factors that must be kept constant. And that is going to talk to the validity of this experiment. Okay? And I think, you know what, I need to have a nice big sip of water. My throat is terribly dry at the moment. So we're going to go for an ad break, and I'll see you all in a minute.